Hey guys, this is Pablo with Meditation Amsterdam. And in today's video, I want to explore a topic that um, has been coming up in the past couple of days. And it has to do with um, our decision making process, how we are faced with decisions so often, um, to the point where it almost feels like life is one endless succession of decisions. <clears throat> about how tiresome that can be, how, uh, how difficult it can be, how challenging, uh, confronting. And um, at the same time, how um, the way our mind presents us with those decisions can be in itself quite a, uh, an avoidant type of move uh, on a more fundamental level. So uh, if you've been following the channel, I've always tried to... Um, go a little bit further than psychology would. Uh, even Jungian psychology, which I've been listening to as of late, uh, is to me uh, a really interesting way to keep things confusing as opposed to go to the, through the full clarification and, and, uh, and knowing what to do on a fundamental level. So hence the perennial philosophies like Buddhism, Taoism, uh, to the rescue, let's say. Now, um, this um this this whole notion of of decisions is um is interesting because we are very very often faced with these big fundamental questions of what to do and um one of the things that i noticed when this happens is how the actions or the courses of action that we are uh, postulating in our minds are uh, really secondary to um, uh, truth and, and real fulfillment. And the reason for this is that these courses of action are because uh, of, of, their, of their dualistic nature. So because they are in the realm of thought, emotion, action of the mind, will always carry within them a kind of poison pill or a sort of uh, a tainted intent, uh, regardless of whether the course of action is, uh, regardless of whether one is more wholesome than the other. Now, uh, as usual, I make the caveat that on a psychological and personal level, you always want to weigh things out and go, go for the more wholesome course of action. There's, there's, that goes without saying, as usual, right? Uh, but sometimes, and, and often when it comes to making decisions or tough decisions, um, it's more the case of two different sets of values coming into collision with one another. Um, either we face a lose-lose situation or we win or a win-win situation or, or two courses of action that can hardly be compared to one another because the, the, the values that drive them are really uh, totally different. So like comparing apples and oranges, you know, we're, we're fun fundamentally faced with do we want to live with apples or do we want to live with oranges as, as we go forward? And <clears throat> if you look at the title of the video, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm trying to invite us to make the most radical decision there is, which is to, um, rather than branching out into decisions, to try and decide to first be fully interpenetrated with the now in which no sense of self can really exist. So, um, and the reason is this is the most radical decision we can take is that it requires for us to uncover the subconscious fear out of which the decision is branching out. And, um, and to recognize that the prongs of the decision inevitably spring out of a fundamental sense of lack and that the options are both promising to somehow enhance and cover up that sense of lack. And because the decision is binary and there is good and bad elements in both prongs, uh, we need to cancel out that positivity negativity and render the decision immaterial 
even though we could still choose for a course of action uh, of one or another. But to come and realize really that those courses of action have unrecognized uh, fears and desires which are subconscious and which are precisely what is preventing us for, from fully penetrating the now and seeing it as perfect in this current moment. So take, for example, um, the decision to, um, to quit your job versus stay in your job. Right now, um, you could say, well, the more radical thing to do is quit your job, quit the nine to five and, you know, go after your, your side hustle um, 100%. Or take the decision of stay in your hometown versus uh, leave home and travel the world. Now, you could say, well, the most radical choice is to, is to leave your hometown and travel the world. Take the decision of staying with your current partner or breaking up and uh, or, or rather than breaking up, entering into a um, um, polyamorous um, uh, style of life. Now you can say, well, that's the more radical thing to do. Um, but notice that in all these choices, there is the chance that either prong of the of the decision is uh, either driven by openness or it could be driven by fear. So the question is, what is it being driven by? And are we aware of what it's being driven by? Now, take, um, take this notion of um, entering into a polyamorous relationship, right? Now, you could say that if you want to explore that, it's driven by, um, you know, a, a, a desire to open the heart and be less graspy and less needy, right? So you're going to sort of, you know, burn your karma and burn your sanskaras that, that tend to cling and, and grasp by essentially letting go of, of exclusivity um, in your partner. But the, the unconscious fear that could be actually driving you to do that is a fear of commitment, right? So the mind will make up this story about like, oh, look how open I am and how I'm like really going with the flow. Look how I'm sort of exposing my, my neediness and my, and my desire for, for exclusivity. And I'm, I'm burning those, those uh, karmic tendencies. But really way, way behind in the back of your mind, th this choice of being polyamorous versus not is, is really driven by a push-pull or fear-desire-based relationship between um, again, um, freedom and, uh, and intimacy, right? There, there seems to be a kind of unbreachable uh, distinction between those two that is driving a certain desire to express that in, um, in following a polyamorous relationship. The very opposite could also be the, true, the truth. You stay in a committed relationship because you want to show yourself that you're not fear of commitment, right? And so look how willing I am to demonstrate that I'm all like into commitment and the rest of it, where in reality, you are really terrified of the loss of exclusivity and, uh, and just, you know, complete openness in which um, your, um, your attachments are essentially let go of. You can, you can allow your partner to do whatever they want and you can do whatever you want, but that terrifies you. So you, you go for the commitment end of the end of the spectrum uh, and you call that you know, you manned up, right? Like you, you, you know, you put a ring on it, right? Like you, 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 you manned up, you put a ring on it, but subconsciously you were, you were ter terrified of either being alone or uh, of letting go of, uh, of exclusivity and attachment. So that is an example to illustrate. It, is, it doesn't need to be the case every time around, but to illustrate that very often our subconscious fear is behind um, you know, the self-congratulatory choice that we take uh, either towards the size of, side of freedom or towards the side of um, attachment, coziness or secure, security. And so having recognized that every prong of a decision always represents in some way one of these two, we want to turn our attention onto why is this decision important? What is, what is what does it promise? It promises to resolve that 
that uh, sense of lack in which I don't believe that I have the capacity to be okay both whether I'm in a polyamorous relationship or whether I'm in a uh, uh, securely attached and um, a stable and committed relationship. Um, and, and so my bandwidth is being tested and I'm going to uh, ping between these, um, these options to try to choose for the one that appears to resolve them in the best possible way, um, but already escaping away from the now and from a now that contains a fundamental sense of like that I'm not ready to contend with. So I'm going to choose to depart from the now so that I don't need to contend with the fundamental sense of lack that the now that is looming, always looming behind you, always, always an, an emptiness that is always lurking and, 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 and uh, threatening to catch you unless you make a bold or traditional decision. And, um, and so um, our, our task, if we want to do real alchemy, if we want to really uh, challenge ourselves, is to go, why do I keep escaping into this, these apparent necessary decisions? As long as I'm entertaining impossible decisions or pinging between um, option A and option B, I'm already in avoidance, in avoidance of the sense of lack from which those decisions sprung and or sprung out and I ought to go wait a moment I need to now orient my attention towards that sense of lack and I need to identify it as not me I need to observe it in a detached way as uh, as the witness as I explained in my previous video and once I have identified that that sense of lack is not not me I need to then allow myself to fully feel it as if it was me so that I can die to it. In other words, there needs to be a psychological death to that sense of lack. It, I need to let it overwhelm me and take me over, knowing, having predetermined that part of me is just pure awareness that can never really be killed by that sense of lack. Having identified it as just a state of mind, I need to let it take me over because then the alchemical transformation can actually take place. And then the prongs of the decision can be selected without being driven by unconscious desires and fears of freedom or, um, or attachment. And, um, and it all goes to, so, so that sense of lack that we're not willing to fear, to feel, um, is, is essentially our, uh, covered up by our sense of self. Right, and uh, a sense of self that we pretend has powers of omniscience and omnipotence to choose and improve things. Right? So we are, and at every given point in time, receiving infinite amounts of input, and our conscious attention can only focus on one or two things at the same time, and yet we pretend that we have enough information to really make. Um, uh, decisions that are complete, let's call it like that. And we pretend that our minds and bodies are omnipotent in, in the sense that we can affect real change in this complete system that we inhabit. And so pretending to, to have, pretending to really know what's going on and pretending to really have control over what happens is a kind of functional delusion that we that serves us as, as, as children, but it's a it's a it's a childish uh, pre pretense, really, and and the sense of self is there to preserve that childish pretense because the implications of that not being the case is that we really are a kite in a storm, a kite in a hurricane, as as they told James Bond in, in one of these movies. That's too scary for the ego. It's, it's way too scary to realize that our, our power to know and influence things is, is minute. So we, we erect a, um, a sense of self that really makes itself believe that it can know things thoroughly and completely and that it can really uh, have effect or be effective. Uh, and, and it's a great delusion to live through because we, we believe that we can you know, have the power to influence things and make ourselves happy. But life through its relentless um, 
hammering on, on uh, uh, in the way that it that it <laughs> unfolds is meant to destroy that delusion, is meant to to render it completely, um, um, uh, yeah, uh, ir irrelevant, uh, or, or so that we can see through it. So so things like heartbreak, things like failure. Are they are there to teach us that the that this delusive mode of mind in which we have knowledge and control needs to be seen through? We need to free ourselves from that. It's a very scary thing to do. Very very scary thing to do. But it's the only available move once the pain has become too much because uh, you just keep banging against reality all the time. It's like it, it's it's relentless, right? And so. Um, so this video is a kind of invitation to say, well, um, the most radical choice we can make, it's not in choosing freedom or attachment or choosing adventure versus uh, staying stuck or, or, or whatever. The most radical choice we can take is to orient our attention into the feeling of self at this very moment and realize that that feeling of self is in opposition to the perfection of the current moment. And it is that opposition stemming from a sense of lack that makes us go into decision mode into trying to escape into options in the future. And that that sense of self, or uh, which stems from a sense of lack, is um, contains unconsciously a, a and understanding that we are not omnipotent and omniscient, and that we are really um, just a just a, um, a a drop in in this ocean of reality that needs to be somehow navigated, but that cannot be understood or controlled in the way that the ego would like it to be. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, in general, th this video is an invitation, indeed, to take that radical decision to uh, not get caught in decision mode, but ra rather to enter the now through recognition of the subconscious sense of self, which is a subconscious desire for control and knowledge. Uh, I am, as usual, very curious to hear what your take is on the video. So let me know in the comment section. And as usual, if you find these topics useful and you think that others might benefit from it, then your liking, sharing and subscribing makes the channel more visible and is very motivating. So I'll be back with more videos pretty soon. Cheerio. Thanks for listening.